Coming up next on Hands and Windows, we're going to take a look at a feature called Semantic Search, which may or may not finally solve all of our search problems in Windows 11. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Hands on Windows. I'm Paul Thrott. And if you have been around Windows for a while, like I have, then you probably remember things like Longhorn and WinFS and database spec file systems and how we were going to solve all those file search problems and and then didn't, <laughs> right? Um, yeah, this never happened. And so, you know, here we are decades later, we're still using the same index-based search functionality that we've always had. Um, Windows added search directly to the start menu, geez, early 2000s. I don't even remember when that was. Um, they added it to the taskbar, which is really the same as start um, in Windows 10 and Windows 11. And it's not very good, right? If anything, they've made it worse, right? There are these weird interfaces like, um, let me bring up search here, um, like the search highlights screen, which has ads on it. And, you know, it's just been kind of a whole lousy thing. But in recent years, AI has happened and not just AI, but local AI, right? So we have these cloud-based LLMs like uh, OpenAI, ChatGPT, and Copilot. And Microsoft, like Google and Apple, has also been working on local, smaller, L uh, small, smaller SMLs, I guess SLMs, small language models, AI models that run on the device, right? And so in the PC space, these, this type of thing occurs today exclusively on what's called a Copilot plus PC that has an MPU of a certain type. Um, I think this is going to expand eventually to other types of computers, but for now, that's what we have. And it's kind of an interesting test bed for some of these new AI features that are coming down the pike, one of which is called Semantic Search. And if you do have a Copilot plus PC, you've probably seen this. So if I actually I turned off uh, my taskbar based search, let me put that back on so you can see it. I'll turn on the whole search box. So if you click in here and start typing, uh, this will work like it has in Windows 11 kind of all along, but you can see here, it's got this purple, blue, pink kind of a icon, which um, helps to indicate that maybe we're doing something a little different here or could be doing something a little different. So I could just do something simple like search for, uh, search for the name of an app. And because that app is on my system, I can click on it and it runs and that works the way it did before, right? Um, the other way is just to go directly to the start menu. So you can either bring up the start menu like you would. You can see up at the top that the search box is selected. And what that means is if I start typing from here, it will give me that it goes right to that same search experience, right? I could also do a keyboard shortcut. So Windows key plus S will bring up that search experience because I've got the search box down there. Um, I'm typing in the, into the taskbar, but if I didn't, there would be a search box up here in the top of the window. So, so far that works exactly the way it's always worked. Um, but there are other places to search in Windows, right? Um, obviously you can go to the file system using File Explorer. And same thing, you can see blue, pink, purple, right? Um, so we're we're playing around with what happens here. But the idea here is that you type for something. Typically what you would really do is go maybe to a particular folder and then maybe go into a, you know, whatever, and then search from there. And because, you know, this will kind of ground, not ground the search, but filter the search down to w what it is you're looking at rather than the entire uh, database of uh, items it could search. Also, just on a side note, although this is not necessarily an exact uh, topic for here, uh, we also have search in uh, the settings app, right? And so one of the other features that's coming in Windows 11 25H2 and 24H2 is this notion of uh, semantic search or natural language search really in the settings app. And so they have a nice sample there. So my mouse pointer is too small is, is actually kind of cool because um, this is a plain or a normal English way of saying this thing. And instead of just matching it to an exact feature, it's using its natural language capabilities to understand what it is you're looking for. And it's even providing a way to kind of do it right there in line, right? Um, which is nice. So that's, that's kind of a nice improvement. But uh, the point of semantic search is to hope to hopefully solve this problem that we have with index-based search, which is that 
at least when I, in my experience, when I type a search for anything, I never find it. So if it's in OneDrive, for example, I could search in the file system and I never find it. But if I go to OneDrive.com and search for it there, I find it pretty immediately. And so what this does is it works off of the index that your computer is already creating. And then it creates, um, it uses an on-device AI model to basically create a, what is in, this, in essence, like a, a secondary index that's based on natural language search, right? And so you can just type, it, it's searching basically a, um, a, a more constrained, grounded version of the index, if that makes any sense at all. So let's see what that looks like. Uh, and this, this will be terrible because I just turned this on on this computer this morning and it's not completely indexed, but let's give it a shot. So I mentioned Longhorn, so that maybe that's a good place to start because I have written a lot of uh, content about long or I did back in the day. So 20 years ago ish. Um, and you can see here, it's, it's, it's not quite done, but of course, when I search for longhorn, um, windows 11 search by default is searching everywhere. So you're getting, uh, uh, the best match is the longhorn steakhouse, which is absolutely not what I was looking for. Um, but you can see here on the side, they have, uh, I guess these are, yeah, these are reasonably close locations for this restaurant that I will never visit. Um, it did find one folder that's kind of interesting, but I could go into documents and just see this. And sure enough, um, I can tell just from looking at these things that these are articles mostly that I would have written, you know, a long time ago, right? And so I'll give this one a shot. We'll just click on this, see what happens here if it ever loads. Uh, da, 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 loaded in a different uh, window here, but yeah, here we go. So this is an article I wrote in 2005 that appeared in PC World. Yes, PC World magazine about um 64-bit versions of windows which at that time were incredibly rare and uh but the point is this is somewhere sitting in my OneDrive, as you can see from the url and in my archives and even though this file is not live you know it's not synced to my desktop here it still was able to find it right and so this is kind of one of those neat um benefits of the ai in a way it's not that index-based search maybe wouldn't have found it but you probably wouldn't have found it, right? So I, in my case, I find that I either have to navigate in and then search from a small, you know, like from a local location or from a location that's more confined, or like I said, go to the web. So that's kind of interesting. Um, it works from everywhere. So obviously if I do it from here, you know, I get the same exact result, right? And you can see the same thing. Um, but you would typically do this type of thing, or I would anyway, from File Explorer, right? And so to me, this is a little more interesting. So again, I'll just keep, I'll stick with the Longhorn example. And this one I actually really like because um, I use Synology Drive and I can see this result here is from Synology. Um, I do have my archive up in OneDrive, which you can see from the cloud icon here is not, it's not local. It's, I mean, you can access it locally, but it's not, you know, downloaded, but it's still found it, which is kind of cool. Um, let's see if I could go into any of these. Um, that makes any sense let me see an article or a folder i should say from 2005 that just has okay it's just a web article but um let me go back actually so but you get the idea so this came up i mean i wrote a lot about long right so this thing found 374 results are still going actually so there's going to be over 400 eventually and probably over 500 really so in my in this case it's everything from screenshots to pdfs to Articles that I wrote, Word documents, HTML documents, whatever. It's like all kinds of stuff. So uh, it's like this whole, um, you know, history of whatever uh, that's tied to um, that particular search query. So that's, that's pretty cool. So the problem with this to me is only that you have to have a Copilot Plus PC to get this. Um, but like I said, I think it's going to come to everybody. If you're familiar with how the index works today... Probably not. Most people aren't, but there is this old school indexing options control panel, which you can find with start search. And you can see it's actually, actually, it's just going to town here, trying to index the drive, which I'm sure it's not impacting the performance in any way, shape or form. But um, what you would typically do is click this modify button and then you could uh, just see what all of the locations were. Ooh, I'm getting one of those user or um, Windows low authentication things. Um and then you could just kind of dive in, right? And so in my case, like I know if I go into my Paul account, oops, I don't want to turn that off, but um, you can see all the stuff that's in there and you could just kind of go through and and just, you would just select, like, I want you to index this this part of it. 
Um, in Windows 11, there's actually a modern version of that UI in the settings app. And so if you go into privacy and security and then search, um, this is some of the, or it's actually all of the same options with other options, right? And so in this case, uh, you know, you could turn off search highlights um, and that was that UI that was so terrible. So you can see this is off, which is wonderful, which is what you actually you want. Um, and then I, for best results, I found, even though it has to do this initial index, um, it's set on classic by default. I turn this on to enhanced and it's basically the entire PC, right? And what that means for me is that if you if I dive into my user account here in File Explorer, I have uh, Google Drive, I have OneDrive, and I have Synology Drive. And each of those things, Synology Drive is the thing I work off of, so that's my kind of current work, but all three of these locations have some archives. And because the, um, the indexing and the semantic search that are available now in Windows 11 with a Copilot Plus PC, can work with cloud accounts, which is an option somewhere. Where is it? Uh, da -ba -da -ba -doo. Oh, uh, somewhere in here. Anyway, there's an option in here somewhere that will say, I'm a bit not tied to that, I hope, um, that will say, uh, you know, search through your cloud accounts as well. So right now, OneDrive is the only thing that's technically uh, directly supported, but it's an open uh, API that anyone could use. And in my experience, it already actually works. So uh, you saw the results from Synology Drive, even though that thing is not um, part of that kind of new cloud system that they have. So does this kind of solve the problem? Yeah, asterisks. I mean, the the problem with it, of course, is that it only solves the problem for those of you who have a Copilot plus PC, which is probably less than 10% of you, right? So um, indexing still occurs. You still have to do that. You have to deal with that, so to speak. I mean, most people wouldn't touch it and it would just kind of work. But um, I found that it works better, like I said, when you turn on that enhanced indexing mode. And I think it's going to come, like I said, eventually to everybody. It has to, right? I mean, this is such a, an obvious feature. It's something that we have been struggling with in Windows for so many years. And this is... I think this is going to kind of solve it. It's interesting. I, I, there was no one over the past 20 years who said, you know what, once AI comes down the pike, we're going to solve that problem. I, they've been working on different ways to solve it. But when AI did arrive, they realized, wait, actually, this is going to work really well. And, you know, it's tied into some of the features that are built into um, Windows 11, like uh, click to do or recall, where it's using AI behind the scenes to do pattern matching and understand what is in a document or is in a, an image or whatever and creating its own index so that instead of just searching against say the fi a file name or if it's a known file type like the file contents, it actually can search against AI's understanding of what is in those things. So it kind of broadens um, the amount of information that can come back. And in my experience, it actually works faster and better. So. Don't often say that about AI, but <laughs> that's the way it works today. So um, so there you go. So uh, nothing is changing from a UI perspective, except for the cute little sparkly purple and pink stuff. Uh, keyboard shortcuts are the same. Uh, Windows key plus S for start search, uh, control F if you're in File Explorer. Um, but if you do have a Copilot plus PC, definitely check this stuff out. Um, like I said, it just, to me, it makes finding things that are in your file system or up in the cloud just a lot faster. So I hope you found this to be interesting and useful. Uh, we will have a new episode of Hands-On Windows every Thursday. You can find out more at twit.tv slash H-O-W. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you, as always, to our Club Twit members. We love you. And you can learn more about Club Twit if you're not a member at twit.tv slash Club Twit. Thanks. I'll see you next week.